Hey y'all, this is Tony with Food and Fitness Online. I'm a registered dietitian and personal trainer. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel here at Food and Fitness Online, and I'll link that right here. Today, I want to talk about how to shop for a personal trainer. Maybe you've decided it's time to lose some weight or get some help with your exercise, and you're ready to look into getting some expert guidance in your endeavors. So you want to get a personal trainer, but what makes a great personal trainer what makes a lousy personal trainer today I'm gonna to give you three good things to look for when you're shopping for a personal trainer uh, their level of certification their expert their experience in the field and finally do they keep track of what they they do do they keep records so number one is you wanna look for the level of certification that a personal trainer has and there's three different kind of main types of certifications. I'll start with the easiest to get. These are the non-college degree uh, necessary certifications. So to get a certification like this you would simply have to have a high school diploma, be 18 years old or older, and take the exam to get this certification. And these are going to be the wide majority of most personal trainers have this certification. This is going to be things like the Cooper Clinic uh, cert, the ACE certification, and the ISSA. There's a lot of them, and you can simply do a Google search and find many, many of these certifications. Uh, so those are generally the easiest to get, and you don't have to have a college degree to take, pass the exam, and get that certification. Then you have the certifications where you have to have a college degree in order to study for and take the exam. And these are things like the CSCS with the National Strength and Conditioning Association and the certifications associated with the American College of Sports Medicine. Now, the personal trainer may not have their four-year degree, their college degree, in something directly related with, pers with personal training. It may not be uh, kinesiology or sports science. It may be something kind of related to that like biology or another kind of science or it may be something not related much to it at all. But they at least have to have a degree and then to take these tests and the ones I mentioned were the CSCS and the certs with the American College of Sports Medicine. And then you have your trainers that have a lot of formal education in the form of a college degree in something like kinesiology, in biomechanics, in uh, sports movement. And they may have a four-year degree, they may have a master's or even a PhD. And that, that person with that level of education can also go back and get certified as the CSCS. So those are really your three levels. You have the, the entry levels, the one where you don't have to have a college degree. That's going to be a majority of trainers have that. Then you're going to have the CSCS and the one through the ASCM. And then you have an individual that may have a degree in kinesiology or uh, further education in that. So that's really the range that you're looking for. And depending on what you need depends on which one should you choose, which is the right one for you. For a majority of people that are healthy, that maybe aren't getting into a competitive sport and they just want to learn how to lift weights and how to get in shape, uh, your general run-of-the-mill certification personal trainers are going to work great for that. If you have something a little more specific that you have in mind or if you have any kind of special needs, maybe injuries that you want an expert to be able to work around or a sport that you're getting ready for, this is where you're going to employ somebody with the CSCS or with a degree in kinesiology or something along those lines. So first find out what your needs are and then look for the certification kind of corresponding uh, with that. And another thing to keep in mind is that you may simply just want somebody with more formal education and more expertise in the field and that's okay too. It's okay to go with uh, somebody who has that. So define your needs and shop accordingly. Number one, what level of certification do they have? So Moving on, you also want to look at the experience that this, that this trainer has. 
So have they been working in the field for a year? Have they been working in the field for 20 years? Experience can speak volumes about the amount of wisdom that somebody can accumulate over time. Also, do they have experience in training others successfully? Somebody may be great at marketing, but have they helped a lot of clients? Or you can look at them. For the most part, you want to have a personal trainer that's at least in shape. They don't have to be a bodybuilder. They don't have to be uh, Mr. America or anything like that. But the fact that they're lifting weights means they have experience lifting weights and practical uh, application and acquirement of knowledge is always very helpful. But I will say this, that how somebody looks is in no way correlated to the amount of knowledge that they know. I mean, you look at some of the best uh, Olympic weightlifting coaches – and they are out of shape. They don't look like they have, uh, they, they look like they may even be obese, but that doesn't mean that they're not a good coach. But it, it can be something that you do want to look for and look at the experience of the trainer, training others, uh, training him or herself, and uh, also how many years they've worked. And finally, number three is, and what I think is the most important, is does this person keep track of what they do? Do they keep records of how they're helping others and how they're training others? Uh, for example, number one, you want to find out if they do exercise testing. Do they do a one-minute push-up test or a five-rep maximum leg press test or a cardiovascular test or something along those lines? Do they do that to assess their clients and track the results? You know, this is great knowledge for the client and for the trainer to know, and it also keeps the trainer accountable. If you're not improving in your exercise tests and you're doing everything your trainer is asking you to do, then you're simply not getting the results that you want. And these are a, a measurable way to track progress. Uh, the other thing that you want to maybe ask is, do they keep track of workouts? Do they write down what they're doing? Now, in some instances, it's okay to train somebody without maybe a full written out plan. But... In the course of training an individual, you want to have a, a plan written out to show the progress and to show that you're taking into the science and the methodology of weightlifting and what separates, you know, you can follow any kind of video or you can show up to a boot camp versus somebody who's taking the time to investing their time in writing a plan for you and, and having a planned workout. And... Uh, finally, do they keep records of results? Do they track things like body fat? Uh, uh, as I mentioned before, you know how much weight you can lift, your, your progress in exercise, are they tracking inches, and, uh, and your weight? And are they writing that down to be able to keep records of that? So when you're shopping for a personal trainer, ask. Say, hey, can I see some records of the workouts that you do with your clients? Or could I see maybe your tracking software? Do you use anything like that? Ask those kind of probing questions and see if they'll be able to show that to you. If they don't have any or they, or they say they don't do that, that could be a red flag. You know, maybe uh, they don't keep records or they don't, they don't track results or they don't do exercise testing. And that is something that is fundamentally important for a personal trainer to do. It's what separates getting individualized attention and a science-based program uh, versus a, a workout of the day or um, anything you could simply just find offline. So in summation, you want to look for at least these three things when you're shopping for a personal trainer to make sure that that trainer is right for you and exhibits a level of professionalism that you're looking for and that's going to be worth the investment that you're making. So number one, look at their certification. Do you have any kind of special needs? Uh, do you have any injuries or health conditions to where you may absolutely need somebody who has the formal education and experience of a higher level certification? Number two, what kind of experience do they have? Do they it, themselves have experience getting in shape? Do they know the practical application of the science that they're teaching? Do they have experience helping others? Uh, are they able to show before and after pictures or, or have client testimonials that you can see that they do have that kind of experience? But a point I also wanted to make about that is that the way somebody looks is 
not necessarily directly related to how good of a coach or how uh, intelligent they are. And finally, number three, do they keep records of exercise testing? Do they keep records of workouts? And do they keep records of results? Look for these three things and you'll be able to find a much better personal trainer. You'll be able to find the right fit for you. And most importantly, find the right person who's going to take you from where you are to where you want to be because results matter the most. I'm Tony Paradis, registered dietitian and personal trainer with Food and Fitness. Thanks for listening.